Hi everyone, today we're going to be looking at the Seymour EA9 HMI series panel object list recipe. Now, Seymour HMI panel software uses virtual components called objects and these objects are programmable to simulate the functions that you require on your automation project. Push button switches, meters, graphs, they're just a few of the objects that are available to you. Now the recipe object changes the value of tags or multiple tags within the controller. So we can change the functionality and select what they call recipes on our uh, HMI. So if we look at our programming package right here, you, the first thing we'll do is you can see that in our object list, we'll go down and we've covered most of these objects. Now we're looking at the recipe. So we have recipe and call recipe. And what these do is allow you to um, call up the, the database information or separate database or separate information that we'll look at. So let's look at our database and our tag database. And what we'll do is we'll scroll down. And what we're going to do is set up uh, uh, four different timers that we're going to use a recipe for. To use MHR 700 to 703 as our recipe. And then we'll use our time sequence, or we'll call it time sequence, and we'll have a title as an ASCII string at MHR 750. Then we'll have our present values at MHR 710 to 713. So there are our um, tags that we're going to use in our sample. So again, our recipe will contain four values for our timer, timer one to timer four. So I cancel for that. Then if we go into our database, you'll also see what they call a recipe database. And we can either get it from here or we can go to um, function and then we can go down to our recipe database under our database uh, name in our navigation window. So clicking it, it'll actually come up with a recipe. And if we want to add a new one, we just hit add. Um, or I have a pre-existing one called time sequence and time sequence one. Let's just take a look at time sequence one. And this is my timer. You'll see my MHR 700 to 703, which represents my four timers that we want for our recipe. And then we have time sequence one to time sequence four down the left hand column. And then I fill in values I want for each of these recipes. Now, if I want to edit that or change it, I can do it right here and then save it with the save button. You can also see that um, what I can do is I'll close this down and you can see that we can edit, we can delete it. We can also import and export it. If we export it, it will actually ask us to save this into a location within our uh, computer and then we can call it back up and we can use any standard um, Windows software package that handles like spreadsheets like that what that looks like uh, Excel would be one of them you could also just use notepad in Windows in order to edit it so we can hit cancel for that and what we'll do we're going to do is do an import in our import here's our our two time sequence that we have right now time sequence and time sequence one let's just uh, um, right click on that hit edit and that brings up my notepad. And my notepad, what I can do is, let me just go File, Save As. And we're gonna save this as two. And we can change some of these values around. And we'll change this, uh, uh, we'll just go 10 for this one. We'll go 20. 40, 60, and we'll, can, we can just leave that the way it is, and hit save, and we can close that down. And remember, we're importing this recipe, so let's just import from here, and hit open. And it says import complete, we'll hit okay. And again, there's my time sequence too. So I look at, I can look at it, and there's my recipe that I just imported. 
So that seems to work fine. So again, great flexibility in how we actually deal with these recipe and recipe uh, sheets as they're called. Let's close that down. So we have a recipe sheet. We're gonna be use time sequence. And there's our time sequence right here. So it looks exactly the same. You notice that we can increase these headers if we want to show the full extent of what we're looking at. So there's recipe timer one, MHR 700. Let's just close that down now. And now we'll go down to our page that contains the, uh, the value. So let's go to our screen here, scroll down. And I've already pre-determined a recipe right here. And you can see that I have my uh, four timers, one, two, three, and four. And I have my set value, which is my uh, set value for my timers, one, two, three, and four. And then I have a present value um, that will actually show as it runs what the timer is actually doing. So if we look at actually the recipe itself and the recipe instruction, here's recipe one, which is actually this recipe right here. So we drag that over if we don't have one and we call this recipe one and we can change the font color and the size of what this button looks like. Under the recipe, we said we want a multiple source recipe, which is the, the sheets that we just programmed in. And we said we want to read recipe sheet time sequence. And then we want to do the static record number of one. Now, there's also a single source recipe. So if we hit that, what that allows me to do is to actually, outside of these sheets, program um, up to um, 90 different um, recipes similar to our Seymour uh, Micro uh, HMI that we programmed previously. So we can program up a sep uh, separate ident or individual items going into different destinations for our recipe. So in our case here, we want our multiple and we want static number one pointing to the first row of our sheet. So hit OK. Recipe number two, again, that goes to um, recipe number two. And three, as you expect, that goes to stack number three. And four, it goes to recipe number four. So the, all we're doing is reading that sheet and then determining which one of those recipes are going to be loaded into our timers. Then what we have is a call recipe. And what the call recipe will do is right located right here. Um, again, we can set our labeled information and our text. Now we can actually call up a specific sheet itself and allow the HMI to um, interface with the operator in order to select which one we want to actually display. So here my sheet, uh, my recipe sheet, we have a row count of four and a column count of four, which will handle our current um, recipe of four rows um, and four columns. Then what we did was change our text size to 14. And you can see down here, I select my, my timing, my time sequence as my uh, recipe sheet and I can also go into here select one of the other recipes that we have um, then we have our type and our type we can have a display only we can have a display and download download meaning download into the uh, PLC that we have connected we also have um, display download and edit so that's the one we're gonna choose just to show you the functionality of this uh, recipe call. And then we have our, over the right hand side, we can see show title bar, which we have selected. We can actually name column edible. So that means that we can actually name different columns, different things. So we're gonna leave that off. We can show and insert row and buttons if we want uh, to be able to on the fly change recipes and change how they interact and then we have show uh, plc or show read plc button what that will do is read the current values in the uh, plc up into the recipe 
So we're gonna leave that unchecked for now because we're only gonna show it and uh, edit it. Hit okay. So what we can do is that is the entire program. And so we can simulate this if we want. Right here, hit start. And we'll turn on our simulator, which is right here. We'll select our screen, recipe 10. And then you can see if I hit recipe one, it loads the values for recipe one, recipe two, and in our uh, time sequence sheet, three and then four. So that seems to work. If we hit the call. Again, when we hit the call, there's our time sequence one, two, three, and four. These are the values of each of these. So what I can do is we'll select recipe number two. We can call up this and we can either edit or we can load. So as soon as we load, do you want to write? Yes or okay. And then we can close this down and there are our recipe that we just downloaded into our timers. So that seems to work fine. So the next thing we do is we actually can transfer this into our controller. So let's hit send. And we will use our US Ethernet. And let's just take a look at our controller here. There we are. And we'll hit transfer. So now we are transferring the program into our controller that was located right here. So our transfer is complete. Hit OK. Close. So now we have our program now into our HMI. Let's look at the actual software. Now we're actually using our Do More simulator. So we have our object. Uh, um, list recipe here and we're going to use x11 and when x11 is actually on the leading edge what we're going to move do is move mhr 700 to mhr 703 which is right here and we're going to move them into N0 to N3 what this will do is on the leading edge we move those values in so that uh, if someone checks the recipe or a different recipe, it will not take until I actually know what's going to move it into the controller. Next, what we do is on the uh, trailing edge, we're going to copy zero into MHR 7, 10, 11, 12, and 13. This is our present value. So we know that once we turn off X11, then we basically reset our timers. Then we have, when X11 is on, we have a 100 millisecond pulse timer that will actually start incrementing um, MHR 710, 11, 12, and 13. And then finally, what we do is we say, okay, if X11 is on and it's less than the recipe count value for that is 50, then we turn on our output which is Y11. And then we have Y12, 13, and 14 representing timer one, two, three, and four. So that is our program. And the next thing we do is we can simulate this. Call up our simu simulator and everything goes off X11 and we'll have output Y11, 12, 13, and 14 right here. That will actually turn on with our corresponding timers. So let's go to our select screen recipe and there's my values here you see it will work we have recipe one two three and four so let's uh, um, also we can look at uh, call timer and let's look at recipe number one again we can hit the load yes we want to load that data so it writes that data into the, those, those channels. And then we can close this down. And there's my recipe. 
So let's turn on X11. And once I do that, what you'll see is the uh, outputs come on and go off depending on what the current value is until they all go off. Then you'll notice that when I turn off X11, the values will now reset exactly as we expected. So going back into my recipe call, I can also go down here and we'll say, okay, let's change this. Let's edit this and we'll put in there uh, 100. So now let's take timer two sequence. We'll load that. It's writing and then we'll close. Save the changes, yes. So now we have 100 in each one of these. So again, let's run the program. They come on and timer one and timer two will not expire until I get up to 10 seconds, which is exactly what happened. Now, detailed information contained in the video can be found at accautomation.ca. A link has been put in the description below. If you've not watched the other videos yet, there will be links in the description below to start you at video one. There will be links to the, the rest of the videos in the series as well. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button below. If you have any questions about the video, please leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer it. If you want more information about us, or you want to get our two free eBooks on numbering systems or robust data logging, please click on the link in the description below to get it. A new video is put out every Monday, so make sure you hit the subscribe button so you get more videos like this in the future. Remember to click the bell beside your subscription to actually see those notifications. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.